Welcome to Manufacturing Now in Virginia, the podcast where we explore what's happening within the manufacturing industry in our state. I'm your host, Jeanette Cunningham, Director of Marketing for Gen Edge, and today's episode is particularly exciting as we dive into the REVAMP program, a groundbreaking initiative increasing the adoption of metal additive manufacturing within Virginia's defense industrial base, especially in small and medium-sized independent machine shops. As the U.S. defense sector faces continuous modernization challenges, the need for advanced manufacturing solutions has never been more critical. Legacy systems and supply chain bottlenecks have slowed innovation, but Revamp is here to change that. With us today is Anthony Tony Zarelli, Vice President of Programs and Health Accounts for GenEdge. He will discuss with us how this initiative will equip machine shops across Virginia with the tools and knowledge needed to drive forward metal additive manufacturing. Let's jump into the conversation. Welcome, Tony. How you doing? I'm doing great, Jeanette. I'm excited to be here. Great, and we're excited to have you. This is such an incredible topic. Um, you know, I think we're hearing a lot about additive manufacturing, definitely within the industry, and so. The revamp pro uh, program is definitely something that's really interesting to us. But before we jump into that, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself and what you do for Gen Edge? Uh, sure. I've been with Gen Edge for 15 years and uh, started out in Lean Six Sigma. I'm a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and came into the organization teaching that and working with uh, manufacturers around the state have moved into working with larger clients and larger contracts. And now I'm under the programs area where we deal with uh, programs that help particular aspects of the manufacturers of Virginia. A lot of times using either federal funds or state funds to help uh, underwrite some of those efforts. That's awesome, and thank you so much for that. And so as we move into some of these programs, can you give us an overview of the REVAMP program and its primary objectives? Sure, I'd love to. Yeah, the, the REVAMP program is, is out of Virginia Tech, and, and it's funded by the De Department of Defense. And the initiative is to try and educate and uh, spur the adoption of metal additive manufacturing in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the reason Virginia was picked is we have such a strong component of the defense industrial base. So much uh, manufacturing, not only in shipbuilding, but in aerospace and also uh, supporting the, the Marine Corps, the Army, Special Forces, and uh, the Coast Guard. So a, a very rich opportunity for this. And metal out of manufacturing, Virginia Tech is one of the leaders in that yeah. uh, okay. area. And uh, so they were they were chosen to, to lead this program and Gen Edge being Virginia's Manufacturing Extension Partner Center, uh, we were uh, brought on board to, to help lead this initiative. Wow, that's really interesting. And so as we talk about additive manufacturing, uh, particularly in Virginia's defense industrial base, how and what are some of the key challenges that small and medium-sized independent machine shops face in adopting additive manufacturing technologies? Um, yeah, before we go into that, can I share some of the reasons why that might be attractive to them? Absolutely, yes, please. Excellent. Yeah, there's uh, some challenges within the defense industrial base with not only coming up with parts for, for new equipment, but okay. for legacy parts. A lot of the equipment that exists in, in the, the armed forces is old. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers are no longer in business or making those parts. So there's it's a combination of coming up, meeting the needs of the emerging supply chain for say carrier construction and also responding to uh, a part breaks and there's no manufacturer in existence anymore to make it. How do we how do we make that? Uh, so being able to pivot to that. So added metal, particularly metal additive manufacturing has uh, some benefits that don't really exist in uh, the other 
aspects of, of metal manufacturing. There, there's really three different ways to make a metal part. Uh, we, we've got the additive manufacturing where we're, we're adding metal to a space to develop that part. We've got what we're calling subtractive manufacturing. And that's what we know as the you know old school manufacturing where we, we take a piece of metal and we remove uh, metal from it to come up with our final shape, often through cutting or CNC machines, that type of thing. And uh, then there's where we have castings and forgings. Those are the formative type of metal manufacturing. So being able to enter that space just because a part uh, has been always made on a CNC machine doesn't mean that we want to move it to additive. I think that there's some special opportunities for additive. Uh, and some of that where additive really shines is the ability to make low volume parts, those those worn off parts that you know come up based off of an, an old piece of equipment or uh, a limited limited run off that. Uh, additive also allows you to go through quicker cycles of learning, more of an agile type of project management where you can develop a part, you can test it, see what the features and, and possible challenges are, make improvements to that, and then quickly come up with uh, a new design that you can produce. When you've got to uh, develop molds or develop um, you know, CNC cutting patterns and stuff like that, it's a longer cycle of learning. So uh, I think additive's got a really good place in, in that space. But to your original question about the manufacturers of Virginia, right. some of the challenges is uh, they, they really need to go into this with uh, open eyes. They need to become educated on additive manufacturing. Uh, not only the you know the terminology the the methods because there's, there's a couple different ways to do additive uh, mm -hmm. and then they need to look and see where opportunities might exist and from that they need to develop a strong business case and if the business case dictates that it's a good financial decision to move into the additive space then you go into you know procuring the equipment and qualifying the parts uh, and the process and and the qualifying the parts in the process can be a challenge because working with uh, the federal defense industry uh, they can be it, it can be difficult to work with trying to understand and navigate the different requirements and the different uh, regulations that you need to do and that's one of the purposes of the revamp program is to try and educate not only in those uh, formative types of additive manufacturing pieces, but really trying to understand what those regulations are and what what type of navigation that a small business would need to go through to be able to enter that space. Thank you for that. And so for the small businesses that are, are listening to this podcast today, and uh, as we talk about some of the qualifiers, uh, you know, for this particular program, what type of businesses would be good for this program? What type of businesses would be, you know, uh, interested in entering this, this space? Are there any identifiers? Well, I think any business that would like to expand uh, mm -hmm. their, their, uh, their revenue stream, there's definitely some opportunities in supplying uh, the Department of Defense uh, and helping them navigate through that and develop though that analysis uh, is is where Gen Edge and the revamp program can come in. We we can work with them to to identify if if they're a good fit. Uh, and so. all right, yeah, no, I I thank you for that. And so you know, as we talk about, uh, I know you talked about uh, earlier about uh, the costs of you know adding some of these machines and you know being able to outfit your uh, manufacturing operations for additive manufacturing uh, what specific benefits um, does additive manufacturing uh, additive manufacturing offer in terms of cost reduction and reliability improvement that, that's an excellent question because people think that additive 
is uh, more expensive. And right. that's true in some cases. I think that the uh, the cost of the machinery, the, the cost of the equipment can drive up the part cost, the individual part cost. But uh, in a lot of cases here, we are talking about lower volume or very complex designs. So uh, where additive can shine is they can help reduce those design costs because there's a little bit more flexibility. Parts really need to be designed for additive manufacturing. You, you really, it's not, not a good move to take a, a part that is typically machined and use that same design. Uh, there's benefits that, to be had through that. And again, that agile type of uh, okay. cycles of learning can really optimize that uh, design. And so lowering the, the cost for that. There's scheduling costs by being more flexible, scheduling cost reductions by right. being more flexible uh, instead of, you know, having a, a, like a long run with, uh, you know, particular bar stock or, or uh, a formative type of casting. You can quickly move from one design to the other so you can be more agile with your uh, production. There's, uh, in, in a lot of cases, logistic costs go down. Uh, there's less waste, less inventory, uh, more efficient management, and in a lot of ways, quality co costs can go down. Uh, you can by by going through that testing, you can come up with a, a valid or verified part design and debug that in quicker cycles of learning. So you, you get to a, a good finished product that meets the the needs. I'm sorry, meets the needs of the the client, the customer. That's excellent. And you actually uh, answered my next question because I did want to ask, you know, how does the revamp program plan to address supply chain bottlenecks and reliance on legacy systems? So I think you definitely answered that, you know, as far as, uh, you know, being able to make the process more agile and, you know, being able to quickly and efficiently uh, being able to add and create these parts. Uh, definitely over time will reduce uh, the bottlenecks and the reliance on legacy systems. So definitely thank you for that. And then so what steps can uh, other states, let's say, that are listening to this conversation take to implement something similar or a similar program and support into their defense industrial base? I think that by going through the same type of steps that we're going through, you know, educating, providing education, bringing that education uh, forward to the manufacturers of their state, helping them uh, research opportunities and applications, uh, and really helping them find that that single vertical market where they can develop a good solid business case, and then make the decision: is it, is it the right move to move into additive manufacturing? Uh, and, and so I, I think that a lot of the different states, particularly with, within the MEP network, really have the ability to, to meet those needs and assist the, the manufacturers uh, of their states. And that's a really great point. You know, the uh, MEP system or the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, we exist uh, to help and assist industry. And we do have locations in all 51 states. So, um, you know, chances are that in other states, if you are listening uh, to this podcast, you would be able to uh, speak to your local MEP and see if there are uh, programs that are similar to revamp in your state. And so, Tony, what kind of support and resources does the revamp program provide the participating manu uh, the participating machine shops? that uh, get into this program? Well, what we have coming up right now is we're going to offer four workshops around the state. We're going to hold that in the Hampton Roads area, uh, in the Richmond area, the Shenandoah Valley, up near in Blue Ridge Community College, and then down in the Roanoke area. Uh, and each of these sessions will be a full day session that will, will walk the participants through uh, different aspects of metal additive manufacturing. We'll start out by talking about what is metal additive manufacturing, when is it the right tool for producing a particular part, uh, how can the technology expand or modernize a manufacturer's capabilities. 
We'll go through the different types and categories of, of metal additive manufacturing, and then talk about the business considerations, how you develop that, that business case. Uh, we'll finish up with talking about how to design uh, for metal additive manufacturing, so design uh, for that, and some cybersecurity concerns. Of course, with uh, today's environment, particularly in the defense industry, uh, there's some some pretty strict cybersecurity requirements. Things that Gen Edge has done for uh, a number of years, helping with the CMC, CMMC certifications and, and that type of thing. And then uh, coming out of those sessions, those workshops, uh, we're going to move any manufacturer that that wants to look at metal added manufacturing deeper. We're going to go in and help them develop that business case, try and de-risk a move into metal additive manufacturing. Okay, thank you for uh, letting us know about the workshops that will be happening uh, around Virginia. Uh, the first one in Newport News, actually, um, it starts on October 8th. So um, we are still uh, holding registrations for that class and did definitely also want to let all the listeners know that these classes are free um, to sign up for. So uh, thank you very much for that information. And uh, Tony, last question, how do you foresee the future of digital manufacturing technologies and evolving within the defense sector? I think that there's gonna be some challenges moving into that space, particularly in, in terms of trying to get the qualifications and uh, requirements more solidified and simplified. But I really think that the future is going to revolve heavily upon additive manufacturing, the, the ability to uh, quickly make parts, designs, pivot, make adjustments. Um, I, I really think that that, that combined with uh, digital twins and the digital workspace and advanced manufacturing as smart manufacturing as a whole is really the the way that American manufacturing can become competitive in the in the world again. Absolutely, absolutely. And and thank you very much for uh, joining the program today and telling us about the revamp program. It definitely sounds like a very exciting program. And with all the workshops that we have available and all the information that is uh, on our website, um, it definitely sounds like a great uh, program for manufacturers to sign up for uh, if they are interested in getting into the additive manufacturing space. Um, specifically for the defense industrial sector. So any interested company that is listening to this program today, you can learn more about the revamp program by going to our website at www.genedge.org and searching for programs. And then on the programs page, simply click on revamp and you'll be able to find all the information needed about the program as well as more information about the workshops and how to sign up. Signing up is free and it's also quick and easy. I want to thank you all for listening listening to this program today and again thank you to my guest uh, Mr. Tony Cirilli for being here and telling us about the revamp program and until next time this is Jeanette Cunningham signing off. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.